move to the role of uh, storytelling in evolution or not. Uh, at, but first, let's watch a, another short clip. So in your book, you, you, you write about how when we see an abstract pattern, we resolve it into a face, and when we see an abs a pattern of events like that, we resolve it into a story. So tell us what that was. That's an experiment from the 1940s by psychologists named Heider and Simmel. And what we can do is really quickly kind of replicate the experiment. They showed them this uh, short animated film, very simple, and they asked them a simple question, about 120 people. Uh, what did you see? So I'll ask you by a, a show of hands. First off, who saw a story? Okay, a lot of people saw a story. Who saw a story with, keep your hands up please, uh, until I say something that does not apply to you. Who saw a story with two males and one female in it? Who saw a story where the big triangle was the, was the antagonist? and uh, the, a male antagonist, let's say, okay? Um, who saw a story of this specific type, a love story? Two, uh, a hero and a heroine struggling against their obstacles to try to live happily ever after. All right. Um, let's, wait, let's lower them down and ask one more question. Um, who saw no story at all? <laughs> a brave man or someone. Okay. That's fascinating. Okay, so what we've done is we've successfully replicated the experiment. What Heider and Simmel found was that only about three people out of 120, three of them, gave a truly reasonable, rational, sort of objective response. I saw triangles and circles moving around on a blank background. That's all I saw. <laughs> Everyone else constructed this really rich, confident narrative. They saw love triangles. They saw soap operas. Uh, most, most common thing people saw was a, was a love story between a man and a woman uh, with the big triangle trying to split them up. But thank goodness it, it ends happily ever after. Um, so I think there's a lot we can pull out of this. It shows that we're natural story. I didn't think that was the same triangle coming back, though, at the end. Oh, that it was a new triangle. triangle. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that was a, you have a dirty mind. No. Yeah. That he was the guy. Be a novelist. He was the guy down the block coming in. <laughs> Uh, so, so the question, I mean, it raises a lot of questions, but the question I'd like to pull out of it is, one, uh, we notice there's a lot of pleasure in the room, even watching this really rudimentary fiction. I, I walk, I'm looking out at the room, people are smiling, people are laughing. How do we become this kind of creature who's able to take so much pleasure in even these really rudimentary stories? And to, to, ask, to answer that question, I think what I'd like to do is run one more experiment, and this one is a thought experiment. Okay? So what I'd like people to do is to throw your minds briefly back into the mists of prehistory and imagine that there's only two human tribes living side by side in, in some African valley. Uh, they're, they're in competition for the same resources. One tribe's going to gradually pass away, the other will inherit the earth. They're alike in every way except the way indicated by their names. One is called the story people, one is called the practical people. They both hunt, they both gather, they both woo mates, they both raise their children. But at the end of the day, at some point, the story people get bored, and they get tired, and they go back to the village, and they throng around the hearth fire, and they start making up these wild lies about fake people and fake events. <laughs> and they have a great time doing it. It's really diverting. But at the same time, the practical people, you know what they're doing? They're out there hunting more, gathering more, wooing more. And they're working harder. Okay, so we know how this thought experiment ends. The story people inherited the earth. They won. Uh, they're us. If those strictly practical people ever existed, they don't anymore. Okay? But the puzzle is, is, if we didn't know this at the outset, wouldn't most of us have predicted that those hardworking, practical people would have outcompeted those frivolous story people? The fact that they didn't, that's the evolutionary riddle of fiction. 